Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's beautiful, it's Monday. Let's get into these charts. We'll talk about Bitcoin price action. We'll talk about Ethereum, Bitcoin dominance, and we'll take a look at traditional markets like the dollar, NASDAQ, and uh, kind of get us a general bias on the market. Here's Bitcoin on the daily, putting another bullish engulfing candle, looks like, it looks like to me, um, the question is, do we have any volume on this candle? No volume yet. And you can see the volume here did not quite make it. So what am I looking for still to this day? We talked about it some time ago is a retracement down to the 618 fib down at 27,500. At a minimum, I am uh, barely, bearishly biased, looking for this to drag itself on out. Um, so any kind of a, uh, so let me get my thoughts out here. Looking to kind of slowly but surely make its way down to this level. Um, it's the 0.5 in the 618. I consider anything in this region a major buying opportunity with a quick stop loss below the prior low. Um, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but Essentially, what I kind of looking at right now on the daily time frame is these three legs up, um, which have resulted in some pretty nice gains, but a retracement down to the 50 percentile on the Fibby, the Fibby Nachi retracement tool. So you can see uh, this first 100% gainer uh, retraced down to the 0.5, pretty nice, and actually got all the way to the 618. You'd be considering that buying at a discount right there uh, below the 50 percentile in a bull market. And uh, then we got this 50% retracement right here. Perfect bounce back down. And then this one uh, we are going to be coming into sooner than later. And you can see that 0.5 is at 28,300. So it looks like short term, we're going up to tag some liquidity. Um, well, the next zone here, looks like we're coming in at 29,850. Let's see if that lines up on any of the uh, shorter term time frames. just for kicks here. Shorter term time frame, 15 minute, got a nice little rally here. And well, closing back below this wick is, uh, not going to be good in the short term, but uh, the question is, is the is the move going to get faded? And I do believe, in fact, we got the first leg one, two. OK, so retracements coming back down to that for 50 percentile, highly likely after this type of a move that uh, did have some volume. Where's that 50 percentile coming in at? 29.5, 29,500, and there is some liquidity at 29,300. So maybe we swipe the lows one more time. Um, turnaround Tuesday is coming up tomorrow. Taco Tuesday, turnaround Tuesday, the big move. Let's see if we have any economic data coming out this week. I did not even get a chance to look over the weekend. Thank God getting a little R&R, &R, getting some rest out there, getting into nature for a nice little hike this weekend. It was amazing. Consumer inflation expectations uh, came out lower than expected. That's bullish for the dollar. Or sorry, bearish for the dollar. I don't see anything significant coming in tomorrow in uh, America. Again, I'm looking for American flags here and uh, the high impact data, economic data coming out. Uh, CAD, okay, retail sales is gonna be coming in on the 15th, which is tomorrow. Retail sales and uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look like anything, you know, majorly important, but might give us the bias that, uh, that inflation is gonna tick up in the following month. That is kind of the expectation now. And housing starts build, building permits on August 16th. And we got jobless claims on the 17th. And yeah, that's that's it out of that uh, little, little ticker here. I've been watching Neobot um, 
Not going to go into that one too much here right now, but uh, up 84% today, not bad. How about that loot? Ooh, I got me some loot as well. Uh, loot uh, coming in up 40% today. And um, again, these are micro caps where you can lose it all, sir. You can lose it all. But let's see where we came in uh, to the 50% retracement. Mm. Well, we definitely got below the 50% retracement, but the next target here is gonna be that 382 uh, for a little TP. Maybe the not 0.5 if the downtrend is going to continue. Um, Aptos had a big rally, supposedly some news with Facebook and some kind of an integration with Facebook and Microsoft. Could be just a rumor. Google is, let's see what Google's doing. Consolidating at the highs. Gap fill coming down at 123. Momentum is low and will cross up above 132 today. So that would be uh, indicating we're going to head in the other direction and maybe come fill uh, the next gap up to the upside at 140. Anyways, back on to the Treasury yields, which is something to keep an eye on as well as we had a major spike in the 30 year. Who wants a 30 year at four and a quarter percent? Nobody. So when's the ultimate target that we had talked about up at 5%? I do think, uh, you know, some selling pressure at 4.85, but the next level up is going to be 5.4, five and a half percent for the 30 year. That would be some points for the bears right now. And it looks like we are going for the retest on the two year which would you call that a W? No, because you got a lower low. So maybe some accumulation at the range highs here. We are still in a down, two week downtrend, two week downtrend. The weekly is now gonna be crossed down from a high level. So perhaps that was the candle to take us out of the zone. Low volatility. Anyways, bond yield spike, probably an indicator stock market's going to continue to come down. The two years already at 5%, four and a quarter, you know, why would you leave your money at the bank? Look at that W formation about to break out and we already took the liquidity there. So next, next kind of target up here is going to be this level right here. And that'll be confirmed with any kind of a closure today here or higher at, uh, we got to close above the mid peak. Yeah. So, you know, anywhere kind of above 4.95 would be good enough for me for some upside continuations. Now let's talk about some of the, uh, darlings of the market, some are, are back onto Bitcoin and kind of give us our bias. So again, we do have that downside bias target. Can we get some upside wicks on the four hour time frame? That's what I have been seeing. Uh, let's see if I can get to my list of coins that I like. There we go. Bitcoin analysis. Oh yeah, this is perfect. This is what I was generally looking at for some kind of a direction for this month. But you can see the four hour range that we had talked about last week is still holding. And it's that's th these these wicks, essentially. Four hour closure above uh, 30,000, call it 30,800 or below uh, 285, very likely gonna get, you know, the beginning of the next move. Call this a megaphone, whatever you wanna call it. But, um, you know, maybe we come up here and tap the Liquidity at 29.9, somewhere up in this region, and then reject once more. You can see this M for formation played out. Now a bit of a consolidation over the weekend. We had consolidation and kind of a downside move. And what typically happens is if a downside move over the weekend happens, well, um, that move is typically not sustained. You got a reversal. They threw it back at about, I think 11 p.m. Pacific time last night. 
which how many hours ahead? Yeah, so that is about six hours ahead of the Asian market open. Kind of in line with some theories out there. Um, what else do I want to say? And something to be aware of right now is this is the first three hours of the market open in the US. So that is typically when you can see some fake out moves. So a little spike to the upside and then they throw it back for the rest of the day. For that kind of a bias, I wanna take a look at the dollar. It didn't look like there was any major economic impacts um, for this week. And this is generally uh, if this M pattern is gonna play out. We just want to see a lower high uh, anywhere below that previous high uh, on the four hour time frame. Is it four hour? Yeah, four hour down M formation confirmed. And um, if we can see a lower high get put in here, which to be fair, I was saying bounce first, lower high, you'd expect some continuation probably down to that gap zone you know, bounce at this level first and then see if the gap can get violated. If NASDAQ starts to close below there, very good warning that uh, Bitcoin might, may not be far behind. And Dixie did break the trend to the upside on the four hour time frame, and it did hit our target. Look at that beautiful. I should be trading Forex. I should have been trading that Dixie because target hit perfectly. We've had this one drawn out. We've said, Hey, look, if we broke this trend line, very likely going to hit this guy at one, three, four, four, seven. And, um, that is going to be the name of the game, lower high or not lower high or not. So any major economic impact things today, it's August 14th. We got another five days. It'll be August 19th. And I don't see anything huge coming out. GDP for Japan's coming out shortly. China. So nothing today, tomorrow retail sales, which I don't think is super important, but what do I know? Building permits, balance of trade. So nothing like inflation, there is jobless claims and uh, retail sales and the bond market to keep an eye on the stock market to keep an eye on and Dixie to keep an eye on if he does want to break out. That'll be the first warning sign that the move's gonna get faded. Checking out gold here. Gold slinking on down to the not 0.5 once again. So we're talking about buying at a discount or a premium here. Where are those discounts coming in? Let's look at this from a daily perspective. So after this parabolic shoot to the upside, we said coming back down to the 0.5 or the 618, which was this green box, which was hit pretty nicely. Now we are just holding off the box of peace, prosperity, or death and despair. Anything below this box is, well, likely telling you move, uh, the move is beginning to get faded. I think gold has a chance though. Gold is that next alternative form of currency now behind Bitcoin as a favored uh, way to store your wealth, if you ask me. Um, so gold short term, if we can pick it up here, uh, you would have a nice W, but needs to pick it up today. Momentum is down. Volatility is still slightly increasing. Dixie going up and, um, you know, lower highs and lower lows on the daily time frame for gold. So in order for this to get a bit of a trend reversal, and you can see here, we did have the three legs. One, what would you call this? One, consolidation, two, pullback, three, and the bull flag, or the bear flag played out, came back down. So if we're gonna reverse trend, you know, this daily time frame needs to hold right here. This pivot is the line in the sand for gold on the daily. Close back below there, very likely going to return back down to about 1800 bucks. Uh, we are now breaking this trend line to the downside. So let me clean up the chart a little bit here for Mr. Gold. Mr. Gold. Oh, I'm starving. I need to get some breakfast in me. Cleaning up the chart here for gold.
So, yep, it's going to be above or below here. Above or below. Actually, I'm going to bring this down to this quick here. A daily above or below there, likely you're going to get uh, either a play to the top side of the range at 2080 or a move back down to about 1800 bucks, And then we, we call it lower high or not back in the middle of the range and uh, judge it from there. Let's take a look at Ethereum really quick as we've been talking about the inverted head and shoulders, which the longer this drags on, the less and less and less and less likely it is to play out. However, we still have the opportunity here. We've got the opportunity, and uh, that was a W that uh, basically failed. But we're still holding the left, the right shoulder. Still holding the right shoulder. If we lose this area on the daily, it's going to be damaging for Mr. Ethereum. If Bitcoin is going to come down, and then that is kind of our base case right now, you'd expect this one to come down as well. And those discount buys right, up, right below the 0.5 are getting, you know, institutions are stepping in. And, you know, I wouldn't mind a swing back down here at 1787. But to be fair, Ethereum looks a little bit more poised for upside than Bitcoin at the moment. Um, but I'd be waiting for and, and confirming this upside move for a move back up to 1923 with any kind of a daily closure back above this, this 382 at 1867. Above 1867, good for Ethereum. Uh, below 1830 and warning signs flashing. And yeah, overall, you know, daily's back above this level and I'm looking for a test of this trend line, break this trend line and measure move plays out at 2,400. Stacks, BCH, perhaps gonna come test this trend line one more time. Once again, BCH, you know, holding up stronger than a lot of the rest of the market and does look like it wants to tick back up slightly. 15 minute time frame, one, two. So maybe has one more pop left as, uh, as long as we don't lose this region. And just wrapping it up here on Bitcoin. So was it a false move? Are we going to get the pullback now? One, two. Could I call that three? No, uh, the third leg. Well, yes, one, two, three. Now it's it's gonna get faded. It's time for the fading to happen. Time for the fading to happen. Uh, I wanna give one short-term trade setup idea for Mr. Runeberger, which unfortunately he's been stopping me out all weekend. Um, Another one on everybody's purview here, Akasha, or no, it's this one, AKT. Tika Tawari did some kind of a big thing about it last week. And um, yeah, shout out to Mr. Jim for pointing this one out to us as has some potentials um, and some kind of an event happening around the 23rd. So. Just something to keep our eyes on here. Uh, compound as well. Uh, just getting that uh, first shorter term pullback. Mr. Compound, sorry, on the daily. On the daily, it looks like it wants to bounce. 15 minute. Gonna do whatever Bitcoin does. Any kind of a closure back below this pivot and uh, the higher low structure on the 15 minute is gonna be destroyed. Not look good on that one. And the last setup I wanted to go over was a rune. Which, to be fair, W just broke, is about to break out on the 15 minute, and I'm looking for 150 to catch the last bit of liquidity, and then a major reversal candle should be. To be fair, you know, this may have been the reversal. So, you know, one, two, three. If you did want to take a short position on something like this, 
Well, um, it, now's the time to do it. Now is the time to do it. And why do I say that? Well, we're coming up right against these wicks and if the institutions are gonna sell it off in everybody's face, what we're looking for is a candle like this, similar uh, bit of a hammer candle, uh, something like that with volume and a reversal. Um, and do we see the legs of the three legs? The three legs, what? You can usually judge it by volume. So we got one, two, three. And this is the faded move, the lower high, if we're gonna get an M formation, which is gonna be something like this. M, back down to the bottom side of the range. We break this low and we come down and retest. Conservative traders are gonna wait for something like this. Either we break back, you know, a little bit higher, tag this. You want to see a break below here, a retest, and then party on to the downside. That's what I would be looking for personally. And again, not, uh, you know, financial advisor, not financial advice, but if we want to look at Rune, which has pumped significantly going into this event or whatever event, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but the low on Friday would have been one, so Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday's low. And if I was going to target a move, it would be down, down, somewhere around there. That'd be aggressive. Okay, let's go conservative. So short-term trade set up on the 15 minute time frame for a big gainer. If this is going to turn out as an M formation, it would need to do something like that. And um, you just don't want to take out that wick. So here's how I would set it up. Short term, short position entering here. On this candle as momentum crosses to the downside. So it crosses up above 142. So it might crash up here. We got two minutes left on this candle. This you know, it could be a very bad trade setup as there's probably a lot of liquidity hanging out here and the better setup would be something like this. 150, shortened down here. Something along those lines is what I'm looking at as a bit of a trade setup. Um, but if it gets confirmed, you know, confirmed, uh, candle with volume breaking the range of the downside then you know you can target this at the level you know pretty easily uh down here at 129 then this level at 123 and then all the way down for the full retrace uh would be around 111 but uh could be a pretty nice mover if bitcoin throws it back if he throws it back throws up those gains then yes it could be a very very nice mover um, to the downside and i guess that first little pocket of liquidity is going to be off the range lows i mean to be fair it's probably going to be right off the range lows Even on a 15 minute time frame, that means probably a bounce here first. And uh, yeah, this is what a confirmation would look like in my book. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, smash the like button, share it with a friend, post a question down below, and we'll be back tomorrow with some more updates. I uh, just wanted to bring up Tether Dominance really quick. Another indicator altcoins are going to bleed it out against Bitcoin. And that Bitcoin has some downside bias. Uh, well, we're breaking this trend line to the downside. It's got that M formation. Um, you know, this is the level to hold uh, for, you know, level one, level two kind of thing. Be on the lookout for this if you are an altcoin partier. Uh, Bitcoin is up there at 29,648. Nice little day, but. 
question is, can we clear the four hour range again? Four hour range highs. Just cir circling it up here. So here's what's my base case, guys. Something like this. Boom. 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 Something like that. Ultimately down to that 27.5. A test of that trend line. And then maybe we pick it up and head up to that 40. Uh, sorry. You know, first major target on the daily time frame is going to be at the 0.5. From the ultimate high to the ultimate low, have we hit the 0.5 yet? On the daily? I would suspect not. Let's see. Did my face get close enough to the screen there? Not 0.5 is coming in at 41,000. Uh, 46 right there if we use a wick basis not 0.5 you know the 382s were the weak bounces coming in at 36 and strong bounce at 42,000 that's kind of my base case guys still uh, gonna play with that weekly trend to the upside and looking for the bear trap bull trap right before the having event which is coming in April of next year so we have all the goodies here. Uh, we're gonna be keeping an eye on the market, keeping an eye on some of the hotter altcoins. Um, and then we will circle it up from there. I hope you guys have a blessed and highly favored day. We'll be back tomorrow and take care.